I'm gonna walk you through my process of designing this infinity cube in Fusion 360. So this is a cube that kind of folds over on itself infinitely using these hinges here. And so the way that we're gonna design it is basically by creating uh, this cube and half, this half hinge and the half hinge down here and this cube as well as this half hinge and this half hinge. And then we can just mirror and duplicate them to create this full shape here. So we're gonna start by creating a new design here. And now I'm gonna create a sketch on the bottom work plane here. So what we're gonna do is first create these two cubes that I mentioned. So we're gonna use the two point rectangle started at the origin and set up dimensions 20 by 20 here. And I'm gonna zoom in now so that we can kind of see it and drag these down so that it makes a little bit more sense. And we're gonna create a second rectangle. And what I'm gonna do is just touch off this point here so that it is kind of locked onto the same axis and click and then again type 20 by 20 to set my dimensions and click again and i'll drag this over here so it makes a bit more sense and now what we need to do is set the dimension between the two squares here and we want to set them to be 0.4 millimeters apart and so 0.4 is going to be a measurement that we're going to use time and time again it's basically uh, two layer heights uh, when you're printing with the, the typical layer depth of 0.2 millimeters on a 3D printer. And so we're gonna use 0.4 as kind of the spacing between all the different cubes here and between all the moving parts. And so the last thing that we're gonna need to do here to fully dimension this sketch is to set this collinear constraint between this line and this line. And now you can see everything is black and this sketch is fully dimensioned as signified by the lock symbol here. So now I'm gonna go ahead and hit finish sketch. And so now what I need to do is I need to extrude these up to make the cubes. So I'm gonna start here by doing an extrude on this first shape and I wanna go up again by 20 millimeters to make a 20 by 20 by 20 cube. And when you do an extrude, it turns off the sketch that you were working on. So just go ahead and toggle back on the visibility, click extrude and then do it again for the second cube here. So now we have these nice two cube shapes and what I wanna do is actually apply a chamfer to give it these nice round edges here, um, or actually flat edges here, but it helps with clearance and it kinda of makes it look a little cooler here. So I'm gonna to toggle off the visibility on body two and toggle off the visibility on my sketch here since I don't need it anymore. And I'm gonna select chamfer, um, select the, the bodies and faces that I wanna work with here, which is everything, and then type in a distance of three here to apply a three millimeter chamfer. And then I'm gonna do the same here for body two. And again, just select chamfer, select the entire cube and type three millimeters. So now I have my nice two cubes right here and we need to go through the process of creating the um, the different hinges. So we're gonna create half a hinge kind of going out this way, another half on this face, and then a half one over here which connects with a half one over here. And the reason why we're doing it in halves is so that when we mirror it, we can select the open face of it and it will mirror successfully. So let's start by creating the one up here. And so in order to do this, I'm gonna create a sketch and I'm gonna use this top plane here as my uh, work area. So I'll just select there and it kind of automatically includes all of the edges of the square. And so actually we're gonna wanna delete this top one here um, because it'll interfere with a, an extrude that we're gonna do later on once we kind of go out this way. And so for this sketch, we're gonna need to again make two rectangles. So I'm gonna select two point rectangle here and the dimension this way is going to be 10 and the dimension this way is going to be seven. And don't worry about its location for the time being, we will fix that in uh, just a second here. So I'm gonna drag this down here and this to here. And now what we're gonna do is set the dimension between this line right here and this line down here. And we want this distance to be 10. And then we're gonna set one between this line and this line, and we want the distance here to be two. And now you can see that um, this rectangle is nice and centered here. And so this uh, right here is where we are going to do an extrude cut downwards to cut out where the hinge is gonna go. But we can also make another rectangle for the actual hinge itself, which is gonna be inside of this kind of offset by 0.4. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go like this. And the dimension here is gonna be 9.2 
by um, 6.8. And like I mentioned, we're going to want to offset it inside of this by 0.4. So I'm going to set a dimension here of 0.4 and a dimension here of 0.4. And so now you can see that it's nice and centered, um, but it does kind of hang over here by 0.2, which is actually exactly what we want to happen. Um, this one's gonna hang over by 0.2, and then the one above it's gonna hang over by 0.2, giving us that 0.4 millimeter clearance between the two cubes here. So that is exactly what we want. And again, we have a fully dimensioned sketch. So we're just gonna go ahead and hit finish sketch, and we're good to go. So I'm gonna hit the home button so I can return to this view. And we're essentially just gonna do this exact same thing three more times, uh, once on this face, once on this underside face, and once here. So I'm gonna go through that process here. All right, so now we have all four of our half hinge sketches complete. So now I'm gonna just toggle off all these sketches here. And what we're gonna need to do is do an extrude cut for the hole and then an extrude for the hinge itself. So I'm going to select extrude and I'm gonna select this outer U shape here and then this inner square here for the extrude cut. And I'm gonna go down a distance of minus seven to cut away seven millimeters here from the top face of this uh, cube here and I'm gonna hit OK and again it toggles off my sketch so I'm gonna turn it back on and now I'm gonna need to do another extrude here and I'm gonna select this internal square as well as this little 0.2 millimeter edge right here and now I'm gonna go down a distance of 6.6 .6, and again give me that 0.4 millimeter clearance here and I want to make sure the operation is new body and so now if I turn off my sketch and I kind of rotate it around 
we should see that I have this nice little uh, cube area with 0.4 millimeters all the way around it. So I'm just gonna go back to my home and now do this for the rest of my sketches here. All right, and here on this last extrude, because it's right up against this other hinge body that we created, you're gonna wanna make sure that your operation is always new body. And again, that's so that we can successfully mirror these. Um, so we want it to be a new body so that this half hinge is separate from this one here. So select new body and then hit okay. And now at this point, we have all four of our half hinge bodies. But in order for it to be able to rotate properly, we need to apply a fillet here on these inner edges. So I'm gonna to toggle off body one and two, which are my cubes, and apply the fillet here in all the correct places. So I'm gonna select this edge and this edge, and I'm gonna go in a distance of 3.3, which is uh, the radius of this area right here because we went down an extrusion distance of 6.6. .6. So we wanna fully round that off and make it 3.3 and then apply the same fillet on all four of the other ones here. And then you can turn back on our bodies and you can see it's really starting to come together. So the other thing that we're gonna need to do is add a pin in socket to kind of join this together so that these hinges don't just fall out entirely. And so we're gonna go with a conical pin and socket design and we're gonna start over here with our first one. And so the way that we're gonna do this is we're gonna design a sketch here on this internal face of the cube and then a identical sketch on this face of the hinge. Um, so you're gonna need to toggle on and off your bodies to be able to successfully select and, and see what you need to do. So don't be afraid to do that. But I'm gonna start here and again, toggle off the visibility of everything so I can just see this area here. And the first thing we're gonna do is do a center diameter rectangle of 2.6 and then another center diameter rectangle of three. And then we need to specify where in this space they need to be. And so we're gonna select the center point, select this line and put it a distance of 3.5 millimeters away. And we're gonna do the same over here and make it 3.5 millimeters away. So now it's kind of centered in this space here. And I'm gonna hit finish sketch and turn back on my bodies. And now what I need to do is make a very similar one here on this face. So I'm gonna to go to create sketch. I'm gonna select this. And again, I'm gonna turn off my bodies and I can actually see this other one on here. But when I go to center diameter rectangle, I can't interact with it. So what we need to do is go down to create, project include, project, and select this center point here to bring it into our current sketch space. So if I toggle this off, we can see it's no longer there, but we have this nice center point here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this, go uh, 2.6, and then again, go three. And hit finish sketch. And so now if I turn back on the bodies, we can see that we have a sketch here and another identical sketch here. And so 
what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate a sketch on the internal face kind of here on the left hand side and then a sketch here on the face of the hinge on the right hand side. All right, and just like that, we are done with all of our sketches here. So now it's time to do an extrude cut to make the hole or the socket, and then an extrude to make the pin. And so we're gonna start again with this first face here that we were working on. And what I'm gonna do for right now is I'm gonna work on this side. So I'm gonna toggle off this body here, which is body three, and I'm gonna select extrude. Now to do the extrude, 
you want to do the extrude cut for the hole first. So I'm going to select this outer ring as well as this inner ring here and go out a distance of three. And I'm going to want to set a, ta a taper angle here of minus 25 degrees uh, for the extrude cut. But you can see here, it's not doing a cut, it's doing a join operation right now. And that's because I need to toggle back on this body and then it goes to red and it tells me that the operation is now cut. So I will cut this here. So that's what we want and I'm gonna hit okay. And now I need to toggle back on the sketch so I can see it and I'll toggle off this body again. And now I'm going to do the extrude just on the center circle, go out a distance of three and a taper angle of minus 30 to make our pin. And now we want that join operation, so that looks good to me. And then just to make sure that everything is right, we can turn this back on and I can zoom in really far, kind of select this interface, and then I can select this and we can see that we have this pin going inside of the socket and we have you know good enough overlap but enough clearance that it should be able to rotate freely, which is what we want here. And so now we just need to repeat this operation on all of these other faces. So now since we're working on the hinge, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to toggle off the body and I'm going to do an extrude. Again, select the outer ring and the inner ring, go a distance of three and a taper angle of minus 25. And I need to turn back on this body to force it to cut, hit okay, toggle back on this sketch and then toggle off the body once more so I can see it, do an extrude, select the center circle, go a distance of three and a taper angle of minus 30 and do a join operation to complete the uh, hinge and the pins here for this one. And so now what you're gonna do is just repeat this for all of the different ones here.
All right, and now we've successfully finished both of the cubes as well as the pins and sockets for the four half hinges. And at this point, we are basically done with our sketching and our extruding. Now it's just a matter of successfully mirroring the correct bodies in the correct locations to duplicate it and create the other six cubes. So what we're gonna do is start by uh, mirroring this one on this face over here to create this cube. So we're gonna go to create, mirror, and select bodies one Actually, we need to select the type as being bodies. And then we can choose body one, which is this. And we wanna choose body three and body five for both of those hinges here. And we're done with our selection. So now we wanna select our mirror plane and we're gonna mirror it about this face here. And um, what we're gonna do is just to keep all the half hinges separate so that we can continue to successfully duplicate things. We're gonna do new body instead of join and then hit okay so that it keeps these halves of the hinges separate. And now we've successfully duplicated that one. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate this uh, one right here. So we're gonna mirror it again, and this is gonna be body two, body four, and body six. And for our mirror plane now, we're gonna select this one. And again, we want it to be new body, and we're gonna select okay. And so now we're halfway there, we have four cubes. And so now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna duplicate uh, or mirror these two cubes along with its associated four hinges and put them over here. But we can't just mirror it along this face because remember we need our 0.4 millimeter gap. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create an offset plane here. I'm gonna select this and I'm gonna go out a distance of 0.2 and we're gonna use this now as our mirror plane. So I'm gonna go here to create mirror and we're gonna want body two, four, and six, as well as 10, 11, and 12. And mirror plane, select this and do new body. And now we have six of the eight. Now for the last two, what we're gonna do is we're not going to mirror anymore. What we're gonna do is kind of manipulate these and copy them. So I'm gonna spin around this way, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select Move Copy, and again, we wanna work with bodies here, so we're going to now select one, three, and five, as well as seven, eight, and nine. And your numbers might be different depending on if you had to repeat certain things or, or if you ever got out of order. This is just the number that, that mine are in. So you can always hover over this to make sure that you're selecting the correct bodies. And now what we wanna do is we wanna select create a copy because we don't wanna move these. We wanna copy them to a new location. And what we'll see is we need to rotate it 180 degrees about the Y axis here. Um, and now what we can do is we can zoom in and we can use this point to point move and select the bottom corner here of this hinge face. And then we'll select the bottom corner of this hinge face and it'll snap right into place. And so now you see we have our finished infinity cube here. We have eight cubes with all of the correct hinges in place and then it is good to go to print. So you can go ahead and save it as a mesh, export it and print it.